Well, I'm secretary of FACRA, for what that's worth. But quite apart from that, um, why does the busway have, if you do t take the central spine through West Cambridge, why can't it turn left and follow the main road as it goes round to the left and join Maddingley Road, instead of going down Adams Road? Because we're trying to spread, we're only talking probably about 10, 12 bus, additional buses an hour. We're trying to spread the load as wide as, wide as possible, which is why we are suggesting three different routes. If it comes into uh, the West Cambridge and back then onto the Maddingley Road, you've then got two but one direct down Maddingley Road and one with a kink down Maddingley Road, and you're putting, we think, probably more eggs in that basket than is justified. We prefer to spread the bus load, the extra traffic, as widely as possible. Okay, thank you. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, it worries me that all I hear about the city deal is about traffic flow and nothing about townscape and landscaping and to me that's crucial because what worries me is that we're going to end up having hostile wedges coming into the town and traffic which are going to divide communities on either side of them and until we start hearing about what the whole package is going to look like i think this is a conversation the wrong conversation i would agree with you um i think that taking one particular bottleneck which is the a428, A1303 corridor, out of the context of looking at Cambridge as a whole, is the wrong way to set about doing it. And we have argued with the city deal that they should be looking at traffic calming and traffic alleviating measures citywide before they start addressing specifics. But we've got the cart before the horse. You know. I agree with you about the landscaping impact, which is why we want to, to put any relief on the existing highway rather than putting a new highway through sensitive parts of Greenbelt. But there should be a planning guidance for all the arterial roads in Cambridge. That seems to be missing at the moment. I think there's widespread support for that, obviously, Alan. I've got uh, four more people who want to ask questions, so very quickly, um, Mark. Mark Schofield, um, you. Um, Robin, fantastic. Um, as a member of the Cambridge BPF and often a critical member, I, mean, I thought that was an excellent introduction. Uh, I'm going to ask you one question, I'm going to ask the other speakers the same question. You know, in your world with all these changes, looking um, Cambridge wide, what percentage of people would you expect to be travelling to work by bus? At the moment it's about 7%. Yes. Yeah. Um, I found that quite difficult to give you a precise figure. I think that if the park and ride was made free, um, I think it's ludicrous that you pay to park. I think that you should be encouraging the parking. If the parking, if the parking, if the parking, if the parking, if the parking part of park and ride was made free, and if the congestion charge payment was used to subsidise the ride bit, so that it was, say, a couple of quid, I think you could easily double that number. That's the sort of target. However, okay. uh, I have to say that we should not make the ride bit free, because you would then spend all your time queuing to get into oversubscribed park and ride. We have to spread the benefit widely across the whole area, including some of the remoter bits of South Cairns. Okay, thank you. In rules, Cambridge Friends of the Earth. Uh, the money that you're hoping to raise from the congestion charge, how do you intend to, oh, how do you propose to spend that to improve public transport? <coughs> is it going to be publicly owned or council owned, or are we just going to be throwing more money at stagecoach? We can't pay for the money. Anyway. Um, I, an entirely political question. There are the figures which it would, the amount of money it would raise, are very difficult to bound around. If you talk to the city deal at the moment, they think it could be as much as 30 million a year, which is serious amounts of money. And with that sort of scale of money, you can start investing in infrastructure, not just in, in services. Um, I have no fixed idea as to how the money should be spent. I think that we should, um, I, it, it goes against the grain to have to subsidize a commercial operator like Stagecoach, but I think that may be, the, in the short term anyway, the only option. I would like to see the buses coming in from the park and ride actually owned by the city. And it was a city service so we could hold the city accountable for its performance, rather than it being in the hands of a commercial operator. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we've got time for one more question. That's definitely there. Yes, sir. 
it's a very long time resident of West Cambridge. I would like to suggest to you that bus is actually a completely wrong solution. All over Europe, cities where transport works have trams. Trams are electric, they don't make a noise, they run in the middle of the road so that parking cars can't interfere with them. They're much quieter, much less polluting, mm -hmm. and also they're much more acceptable to the population. Lots and lots of people travel on tram, trams that don't travel on buses. Yep. Okay. I would okay. urge you okay. to make a And the buses the which, I, I, I don't know if I had time to say, the buses which we are suggesting should have access to the city should be what is called Euro Standard 5 or 6. That means that they are either hybrid or they are purely electric. So you're not having buses, polluting buses like you get at the moment with clouds of exhaust. The buses coming in would be quiet and they would be on running, but they would be quote sustainable. Oh. And the other, they run on a track.